Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to talk to you about the idea of layering sounds. Now, when I started playing keyboard uh, and I figured out that you can layer two sounds on each other, then the first thing I did, I think like many keyboard players, is take a piano sound and layer on top of it a pad or string sound. Now this gives you sort of some, you know, this oomph or, or accompaniment to your piano playing. Now the two sounds play different roles. The piano is in the forefront, it sort of plays the, the melody and the accompaniment and the strings are usually in the background and they add this space or, or size to your playing. But it's obvious to the listener that there are two distinct sounds at work here. The kind of layering I'd like to talk to you today about is kind of different. We're going to use or layer sounds which play the same role but have different and complementing characteristics. And I'm going to give you three examples. The first one, which we'll start with, is we're going to layer an acoustic piano sound over an electric piano sound. So, here's my acoustic piano sound. And what characterizes this acoustic piano sound is that it has a sharp attack and then it decays fairly quickly. Now on the other hand, if we look at or think about most electric piano sounds, they actually have a softer attack and a longer sustain or, or you know, slower decay. Now by layering these two sounds together, we get a sound that borrows the sharp attack from the piano, from the acoustic piano, and the longer sustain from the electric piano. And we get this, you know, obviously very classic 80s sound. We can of course, change how much attack and how much sustain we want by changing the relative levels of each of the layers. So I can, you know, bring down the, let's say, the electric piano, and then I have a more sharp acoustic sound, or bring it back up, and then I have more of a hybrid or an electric piano sound. So two sounds, they play the same role, they're both pianos, but they have complementing characteristics. My second example will involve layering guitar sounds. Now I've opened up uh, three instances of contact, which is a sampler in my digital audio workstation. I use Cubase, but you know, you can do this in whatever environment you prefer to work in. And I've loaded up uh, these three guitar samples by Evolution, uh, which in my opinion, they make the best guitar sample sets I've ever heard. And this is not a paid promotion. I've never gotten any money from them. Uh, and let me first of all play the three guitar sounds to you. And then we're going to layer them and I'll explain sort of why I chose the different sounds. So here's the first sound. So this sound has uh, quite a bit of mid-range to it, to my ears. So in the frequency space, it occupies the middle of the frequency space. Uh, now the second sample, uh, guitar sample, sounds like this. Okay. 
This sample is, has, you know, is a lot sharper, it has a lot more high frequencies. And finally, the third guitar sample is this. Now, this, I think, occupies the mid-low frequency range, and it also has some reverb in it. So it adds some, or it, you know, unlike the previous guitar sounds, it has a little bit of space around it. By layering these three guitar sounds on top of each other, we're basically filling up the frequency space and also adding a little bit of real space by using the reverb from the third guitar sound. Let me layer them in the software and play this so you can hear exactly how it sounds. So these are the three guitars layered on top of each other, and they have this huge sound, which is useful if you're looking for a huge sound. Uh, the, it is good if you're using, if you want to play like a big solo line uh, or a riff or, you know, a huge power chord, say. Or if you want to play like a riff, like a, I don't know, an, an Aerosmith riff. Now, because this is such a huge sound, huge in the sense that it occupies all of these, you know, mid, low, high frequencies, has some reverb on it, it's a very demanding sound from the listener's point of view. So it's hard to have a lot of other uh, instruments in there while this is playing, because this is going to take up a lot of the sound space in your composition. So always be mindful of that. When you're layering sounds, you're getting a bigger thin sound but that comes at the expense of maybe other sounds in your composition. Sometimes the right thing to do is to use just a small, tiny sound for whatever it is you're doing. So it's something to think about. The third example I'd like to uh, show you involves layering two pad sounds. And for this, I'll be using uh, a subtractive synthesizer called uh, the Hive. It's made by UHE, and again, in my opinion, I think this is probably one of the best subtractive synths I've ever heard. Again, no, this is not a paid promotion. I never got anything from UHE, so just my personal honest opinion. Let me play the two pad sounds out for you, and then I'm going to layer them, and you'll see how they complement each other. All right, here's the first pad. So this is kind of like an analog string pad with a lot of high frequency content. It has a narrow stereo field. Well, maybe not that narrow, but not a huge stereo field. Now contrast this with the second pad sound. This sound has more mid to low frequencies, and I think it also, to my ears at least, has kind of a wider stereo feel to it. By layering these two pads together, you can get a really huge sounding pad, which would sound like this.
So this is a great pad if you're, you know, starting out, uh, if you want to have like a big pad intro to a song or something like that. Again, keep in mind that layering sounds results in a huge sound that can sometimes be a net negative because it doesn't allow other sounds to occupy the sound space. Not only that, but in the two pads that I've played you, each has uh, or behaves responds differently to changing the modulation wheel on my controller keyboard. So when I change my modulation wheel now, each of these pads changes in a different way. And this again allows a fair bit of motion or sound variation when I play. So I'm just gonna play, play with, around with the mod wheel. Well, there you have it. Some ideas of how layering sounds that play the same role but complement each other can result you know, in a bigger sound that might or might not be something that you're looking for. This is a great technique, I think, to keep in mind you know, whether you're arranging stuff, you're a producer, or you're an onstage keyboard player, and maybe your sound isn't cutting through the mix, uh, or doesn't have enough presence and just gives you another tool in your arsenal to in your you know sound design arsenal that's it i hope you've learned something interesting and i'll see you next time